Project Rosalind is a project run by the Bank for International Settlements, or BIS, which if you remember is essentially a bank for central banks, and the Bank of England, the central bank in the UK. And Project Rosalind was first discussed and introduced back in 2022, with it getting up and running in 2023. But as you can see here, Project Rosalind's aim was to develop and test different prototypes, interfaces and applications with the aim of understanding what central bank digital currencies or CBDCs would mean for banks, institutions, payment providers, fintechs and users in a real world setting and ultimately introduce and distribute retail CBDCs in the UK and around the world. So please do like this video and subscribe to the channel so I can continue to offer more content for you in future. Just a reminder that nothing contained here is financial advice. And let's jump straight in and take a look at this project to implement retail CBDCs in more detail and ultimately see whether it was successful. Project Rosalind was essentially a test phase for CBDCs to see how they worked and they succeeded because public and private sector collaborators developed more than 30 prototypes of retail CBDC use cases, including payments made online for retail CBDCs, in stores and offline, point of sale, QR codes, mobile phones, smart cards, biometric devices, smart assistants, and micro payments. They tested the functionality and demonstrated the capability of the Rosalind APIs, which is how they work. And interestingly, these APIs that were set up by Project Rosalind for businesses, etc., to use, use the SHA-256 hashing algorithm, which Bitcoin also uses to secure its blockchain which you can see a basic example of here. And to explain this simply, in case you weren't aware of it, it's where there's an input at the top and provides a hash as an output at the bottom, which will change even if I were to remove the full stop at the end of the sentence or add a capital letter, for example, in the input in that top box. There's no mention of Bitcoin or proof of work in the report though. The APIs don't support non-custodial wallets such as cold storage or hardware wallets where the user holds the private keys. So obviously very centralized with no mention of decentralization in the report as expected, unfortunately. Offline transactions are supported where you can transact and bring the CBDCs online at a later stage. And central bank digital currencies, as I'm sure you know, are issued by the central bank of that country and the report confirms that these can be converted one-to-one -one for commercial bank money. However, third parties wouldn't be able to issue their own liabilities or hold custody of or issue any synthetic CBDCs themselves. It also confirms that there would be no limits to the amount of CBDCs you could hold in an account or any limits on how much you could transact in each payment, which other CBDC projects have imposed. The CBDC ledger would operate in real time, so leveraging the blockchain and distributed ledger technology here from crypto, and transactions would be settled on a one-to-one -one basis without bundling them together with other transactions. And finally, the report does state that the Rosalind APIs don't allow a central bank to program them because they use smart contracts which we'll look at a bit later in this video anyway. But I will include a link to the 36 page PDF report on the Project Rosalind by the BIS and Bank of England in the description here, should you wish to check this out yourself. Participants and collaborators in the Project Rosalind included a few big names, including Amazon, the Central Bank of Canada, Barclays, Idemia, which is a large biometrics and cryptography company based in France, 
but with sites and operations worldwide, MasterCard and Revolut. And you can see some additional participants here in this list, including Amazon and Revolut that I've just mentioned, but also the Central Bank of Hungary, etc. There were also advisors to Project Rosalind with some notable names including an engineer at Stripe, which has just reintroduced crypto payments via USDC after stopping these all the way back in 2018, which is good news. The principal engineer at Google and the head of CBDC and protocols at Visa. But it's not just the BIS and the Bank of England who've been leading on the project Rosalind because the large digital transformation solutions company UST that has headquarters in the US and India, as well as, and probably more interestingly, the cryptocurrency firm Quant, which is at the time of recording this video, the cryptocurrency with the 72nd largest market cap size, standing at about one and a half billion dollars, with Quant working with the BIS, the Bank of England and UST on Project Rosalind, and its tests for retail CBDCs. And the Project Rosalind APIs that I mentioned a bit earlier, which are how these retail CBDCs could be tested, well, it was actually Quant that underpinned and provided the technological foundation and therefore functionality of these because they used Quant's overledger technology, which as you can see here, is Quant's way for businesses, etc to build on the blockchain. Quant say that this saved them a lot of time and meant that they could set Project Rosalind up in six months because they didn't need to build on another blockchain. Quant also states that it set up the smart contracts for Project Rosalind, including the CBDC smart contracts. So this could be bullish for Quant as a cryptocurrency if any future retail CBDCs use these Project Rosalind APIs. And the founder and CEO of Quant, Gilbert Verdium, whose background lies in security and technology in TradFi firms, stated that previously, a lot of research and theory had been conducted on retail CBDCs, but that this was the first time that they were testing them with real applications, real payments, and real use cases in terms of how users and businesses transact. He also said that they were able to create a new form of money through Project Rosalind, like a digital escrow. And if you don't know what an escrow is, it's essentially where a third party holds money for others and then completes the transaction on their behalf when certain conditions are met. And finally, there are a lot of mentions of public private sector collaborations through Project Rosalind, seemingly to appease banks and to encourage them to adopt new innovative products through this new retail CBDC structure, with Gilbert Verdian stating that the opportunities for this are apparently almost endless. But that ends this video looking at Project Rosalind. And as always, I'd love to know what you think in the comments below about it. And if you are interested in more of a tailored approach to your crypto education and you think you'd benefit from having someone look over your shoulder and guide you on your journey, I do offer one-to-one -one coaching to those who have the desire and the means to educate themselves further. And there are links in the description where you can message me and book in a free video call to see if we'd be a good fit. And if you found this content interesting, please do like the video and subscribe to the channel as it really does help. And have a great day.